Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're jumping into an eighth grade topic continuous and discrete graphs. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about you see today, or even on homework, you can always put it in the comment box below, or visit my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I'll be linking my 8th grade playlist in which I cover a lot more topics. So, if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started! When looking at a graph, it will be pretty obvious to tell whether it's a discrete graph or a continuous graph. And that's because your continuous graphs will all be connected, whereas your discrete graphs will not be connected. However, if I was to ask you what makes a graph continuous, could you answer that question? Well, let's look at this graph here. Clearly, this is going to be a discrete graph. We can put discrete here. And like I said, it's pretty obvious. None of these points are connected. And if I was to ask you, could you determine the domain for this graph? You would say, well, looking at this point here, the X value is going to be negative two. Looking at that point, you have a negative one. So let's start writing that. We have a negative two, we have a negative one, we have a zero, we have a one, and we have a two. So this would be the domain. And of course, by extension, you can find the range in a very similar fashion. Looking at that point, we have a two here, right? So we have a two here. We have a one here. We have a zero here. We have a negative one and we have a negative two. Finding the domain and range for your discrete graph is pretty much just going to be finding your X and Y values at those particular points on your graph. Now, if you're confused about what a domain and range are, no worries, I have a bunch of videos you can find right up here. But now that we've already found our domain and range for our discrete graph, let's move on to this graph here. Now, we already know this is going to be our continuous graph. But if I was to ask you what's the difference between these, what would you say? Well, you may be tempted to say, well, all of these points are connected. And that is, in fact, the answer. However, what does the connection mean? What does it mean to have these points connected where these are not? Well, when you connect any two points, what that graph is telling you is that your graph is defined for every X value between these two points. So this is an X value, we know that to be negative two, and this is an X value, we know that to be negative one. When you connect these, you're saying you're going to have an X value that's gonna be in, in its domain everywhere between negative two and negative one. And the same thing happens when you connect negative one and zero. You're gonna have an X value between every one of these that you're connecting. And when you do that, you're actually gonna have an infinite amount of X values because there is going to be an infinite number of numbers between any two points on this axis. And just think about it. When you're going from negative two to negative one, you have negative one and one half, right? And you have half of that and half of that and half of that, and you're just gonna keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You have an infinite number in between negative two and negative one. And the same thing happens everywhere else you're going to connect two points. Now, if I was to ask you to find a domain for this continuous graph, what would it look like? Well, we just said we're gonna have an infinite number of numbers, X values, between these two points here, and we have way more points than that. We can't really write down our domain in the same fashion. So you're gonna to have to use something like an inequality to say the same thing. So you could write it in this fashion. You can put for all X's in which X is between, and we're gonna say equal because it's actually gonna be defined at the endpoints as well. But you're gonna find your smallest X and your biggest X. This is gonna be a negative two, and this is gonna be our positive two. And what this tells us is, for every X between negative two and positive two, we are going to be defined there. It's going to exist for every X. We're continuous. And by extension, you can do the same thing for your range. Find your smallest and your biggest range. So Y is gonna be biggest at two here, and it's gonna be smallest at negative two. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we have a negative two, 
y positive 2. So not only do we know visually which one is a discrete versus a continuous graph, we also know why. We know that in order to be a continuous graph, you have to be defined for every x between your smallest and your largest x value. And of course, in order to be considered a discrete graph, you don't need to be defined for every x value, just the particular ones that you see here. So let's jump into a few examples to determine which ones are going to be discrete and which ones are going to be continuous, as well as jotting down their domains. Okay, looking at our first example, is this going to be discrete or continuous? Well, this is going to be discrete, right? This is going to be discrete because none of these points are connected. So what's going to be our domain now? Well, looking at these points, we see that we have an X value at negative two, an X value at negative one, one at zero, one at one, and one at two again. Now, if we look at this graph, our second example, we see that this is actually going to be continuous, right? because all of these points are connected. Now, what's the domain here? Now you could say negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, but remember, this is connected. And that connection means that we are defined for all of those X values. So in fact, we have this range here where you're gonna go from negative two. Now, let's make sure we have our, our inequality, right? x all the way up to 2. And of course the range is going to be a little bit different, but we don't need to worry about that right now. We just want to see what's the domains and can we determine if they're discrete versus continuous. Let's move on to our next examples. So looking at our next example, we see that this is going to be what? Continuous or discrete? Well, it's connected, so this has to be continuous. And the connection means that we're going to be defined at every x value between our smallest and our largest. So our smallest x is going to be what? We have this x, our smallest x is this negative three, and our largest x is gonna be that positive three, and we're gonna be defined everywhere in between those two. And when we look at this graph, we see that this is going to be what? Continuous or discrete? This is going to be discrete. None of these points are connected. So what's going to be our domain for this? Well, looking at this first point, we see the x value is going to be negative three. We see that we have no points for one and two, or negative two and, and negative one, but we do have a point at zero. Nothing at this one. We do have a point at this two here, and we have a point at this three here. And remember, the domain is always going to be your x values. So you see, for your discrete, not only do you need to not have a point defined at every x value, you don't even need to have one at every integer. Let's look at two more examples. So for our next example, we have the following graph. Is it continuous or discrete? Well, you see, everything is connected. So we know this is going to be continuous. But what is going to be the range for this? Well, once again, this is continuous. So we're going to have our inequality, find our smallest x value and our largest x value. Our smallest one is going to be this negative two, and our largest is going to be one, two, three. So a negative two, two, three. I'll move this over a little bit. So we can say negative two, x, three, put our less than or equals here, and we have our range. So let's move on to our last graph for today. When you look at this, is it going to be continuous or discrete? Well, we know this is going to be continuous, which means that we're going to have our inequalities. So we're going to set it up in this fashion. Now, if I was to ask you to find the domain, what's going to be the domain for this graph? Now, you may be tempted to say the same thing you got for this graph. You're negative two to three, right? However, they're continuous, but not in the same way. Notice this graph, has arrows here, arrows here. This graph does not. These arrows mean that the graph continues. It continues going on forever. Keeps going in the same way that the arrow is pointing. It doesn't stop. Whereas these don't have any arrows. This is the end point. That is the end point. It stops there. Continuous, it stops. Now they're both continuous graphs, but this continues on continues on, these do not. What does that mean for our domain? Remember, 
when we set up our domain, we have to find our smallest x and our largest x and say that we're defined in between both of those two values. But when we have this continuous graph here that keeps on continuing, what is going to be our smallest and largest x? We're going to have something called infinity. Infinity. And infinity. And we actually can't equal infinity. So instead of having less than or equals here, we're going to have just the less than. Everything else is the same. So you see, you can have two different types of continuous graphs. You can be continuous with endpoints, or you can be continuous without. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video, and I hope you now know what makes your graph continuous and what makes it discrete. However, if you have any questions about what you saw today, or even your homework, you can put it in the comment box below, or visit my Facebook page, at Timmy Senpai, and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting you to know that you found a video helpful. And if you found a video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope it helped with your homework, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, here's your playlist, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Simpah.